Dear colleagues, hi. Welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to talk about tests and exams. Tests and exams are part of assessment. We have two types of assessment. We have the formative assessment, which is given frequently throughout the course to evaluate progress, to identify the gaps and the weaknesses of your pupils, and to improve the learning. The feedback in this type of assessment is needed, to not say compulsory, to be effective. We have types of assessment, of formative assessment, activities, quizzes, discussions, and reflection. On the other hand, we have the summative assessment, uh, in which the focus is on the outcome of the program. It is presented at the end of the term or of the semester. It is used to collect evidence of student knowledge, skill, and proficiency. We have types. The most common types are tests and exams, and we have uh, in some scientific uh, subjects, we have creation of product or creation of a new item. Um, I saw many posts looking for ready-made tests and exams. I do understand novice teachers are new, so it is something like doable, but I want you to learn how to design a good test and a good exam relying on yourself. Of course, to be able to design a good test, you have to take into consideration a list of characteristics. Of course, we have many characteristics, but we just um, are going to mention uh, four of them uh, in order to be able to master uh, the, the test you are designing. The first characteristic is validity. Um, a, a valid test is a test uh, which measures what is supposed to measure. If I want to evaluate my pupil's ability to memorize, I won't design a test in which I give them questions of intelligence. So this is a valid test. The second characteristic is practicality. Practicality, uh, it means um, it is a test which is easy to design, which is easy to administer, which is easy to mark. Of course, you, you have to take into consideration the scoring. When you design your activities, in each activity you are going to, um, to, to count at each time you're going to take into consideration um, the importance of scoring in each activity. Does this sentence require one uh, point? Does this sentence, does this activity require three points? A good test, a practical test, is a test um, which should be done, good conditions, uh, with simple instructions, uh, clear handouts, simple questions, and timing is very important. If you, um, if you prepare a test of two hours, it means you're going to devote two hours to your pupils. If you design a test of one hour, it means that your pupils are going to sit for the test for one hour only. So the timing is very important. The third characteristic is objectivity. So an ob test is a test which, in which like the teacher is going to exclude as far as possible the subjective element. Uh, when the test is corrected by 100 uh, teachers, uh, it will get the same results. It means uh, if I correct a paper of, of a pupil and he gets, for example, 10 out, uh, out of, of 20, uh, if this paper is going to be corrected by 100, 1,000 teachers, they're going to find the same result. So here it means that my test is objective. It means that it's reliable. It means that, um, it means that uh, I, I haven't uh, taken into consideration the factors of, of, of the pupils, um, rich or poor or, or or ill or sick or it, no emotions no feelings so no subjectivity then we have uh, discrimination discrimination is a very important aspect in designing a good test uh, discrimination it means that um, you're going to discriminate among the performance of the of the different pupils it allows the teacher to differentiate between uh, the level of the pupils it means if I prepare a difficult test and I know that it is difficult, I'm going to um, have expectations. For example, I have uh, 30 uh, pupils in class, um, uh, 5 to 6, for example, 5 are excellent, um, 15 are just 
good and the others are somehow weak so if i design or i give them a, a difficult test i'm not going to wait for 18s and 19s uh, from part of of more than 20 pupils or it's impossible so my test is going to help me to make the difference between the different level of my pupils and this is what is meant by uh, discrimination now I'm going to uh, show you an example of uh, a test, a first term English test uh, of first year. So uh, I have to tell you that the way you present the test is very important, even for the pupils, even for first year pupils. If, they, if you give them a test which is not organized, um, in which the writing is not clear, um, in which they don't have to write their names, in which um, you don't have the school, it's going to have, um, going to have a bad image, S frankly speaking. Um, you work on the organization of the test and you work on the presentation of the test because it reflects the teacher, even if it's not the pupil who is going to see. Uh, the test their parents will so please you have to work on uh, the presentation of your test it's very important uh, what you have to mention uh, on the head you have the school which is very important then you have the school year then you have the level and the full name here your pupils are going to write their names on doubts and of course, after that, they're going to, of course, they're going to do the test on the paper, but they have to write the full name on the handout. Then you have the title, of course, first term or second term or third term English test or exam. Then you have the teacher's name. I think that the teacher's name is very important because it is going to, um, to reflect your personality. That's how I see it. If you mention your name in the test, it should be yours. This is like very clear. You don't take the test of another one or the activities of another of another teacher and you write your name. I think it's not very fair. You have to design a test which is yours and you write your name. Then you write text. It's very important to write the word text before the text because maybe third year and fourth year know that this is a text, the, the biggest paragraph is a text, but for first year and second year, they don't. Maybe they, they, they understand that this is a text, but it has to be clear. We say that we try to simplify things for our pupils the maximum, so we write text. Then the text, uh, the type of writing, it should be clear, please. Uh, New Romans or, or Calibri or Arial, it should be clear and it should be squared. I say it should, not it must. Now it's your, you are free to do whatever you want. It's just an advice. You, it has to be framed, it has to be squared. And you don't have to uh, forget punctuation, capital letter where necessary, and you have to scan your text after writing it because if you if you are going to find mistakes later and it's going to be late there are mistakes which are acceptable and there are some other mistakes which are not acceptable so please you take time to scan your text after scanning the text of course you have three parts in uh, in english you have the first part uh, which is devoted to the comprehension of the text. We have the second part, which is devoted to grammar. And you have the third part, in which your pupils are going to write something. Now, something very important, you have to mention the score of each part. But don't mention the score of each activity. I will tell you why. It's professional to mention the, the score of each part. Part 1, 7 points. Part 2, 7 points. Part 3, 6 points. It's okay. If you mention the scoring uh, of the parts, it's 
uh, something like which is going to motivate your pupils to work better if they see the marking especially for the paragraph ah it's out of six so it's going to be like if i write a good paragraph i'm going to get maybe five out of six this is motivating somehow but if you mention the score of each activity no and it if you put a score for each activity, for example, activity one, two points, activity two, three points, your pupils are going to focus on the scoring more than the activities. And they will say, ah, since activity one, it's out of two. And activity three, it's out of three. Ah, okay, so I'm going to work uh, on activity three better. Huh? I'm going to devote time to this activity. It's better than the first activity since it has less mark. You don't have to mention the scoring of each activity. Uh, now, for example, for uh, the first part, you generally have uh, true or false, then answering the questions, then uh, synonyms and opposites. Here, for my case, since it's the first term English exam, so it's their even first uh, test in English, so uh, I simplify things for them. I presented a table of, uh, of five columns, taking into consideration the marking, and I put name, age, country, hometown, and school. My pupils are going to look for, uh, for this information. This is going to uh, make them get familiar with the test and with the text then they are going to be able to answer uh, true or false. Then I mentioned uh, simple questions for true or false, then activity three, uh, synonyms and antonyms. So here I just presented the synonyms. Concerning the second part, uh, here I um, presented an activity of punctuation. Uh, in which I ask my pupil to supply the sentence with the punctuation and the capital letter uh, where necessary. Activity two, I uh, made an activity uh, which is which involves verb tense, so uh, verb in the present. And activity three, uh, I asked my pupils to classify the words uh, in the table according to the pronunciation, since we have uh, E, I think, which was omitted from the program, I presented I and A. Now, if you see that there is a lesson or there is an activity which uh, is omitted from the first sequence, just you have to modify the test the way you want. Of course, the instructions should be clear. I know that first year pupils are not able to uh, understand, but you have to train them in class. Uh, what is I supply? What is I put? What is I classify? What is I circle? Where is I cross out? Where is I write? Where is I fill in? You, you have to train your pupils for, uh, for, for the test and for the exam, of course. Uh, then you have part three. Of course, I have to contextualize my, uh, my, my written expression. So Maya is your pen friend on Facebook and she wants to uh, know about you. So post your information here. You're going to make your pupils focus on the first name, family name, age, country, hometown and school. Okay, don't make them focus on the context because it will be like confusing. Just make them focus on the important points they're going to, uh, to write about. Uh, so I promise to um, post this test on my uh, Facebook page so that you can download it. And I'm going to post other tests of second year, third year and fourth year. Uh, you have to mention at the end, good luck. It's going to be motivating. And of course, add a picture in your test. They are very young, so they need some pictures to be like motivated. Add a picture next to the text is going to be useful, believe me. Um, thank you so much, my dear followers, for watching this video. I hope it was useful. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.